Okay. What I'm going to do is draw a comparison between 1D arrays and 2D arrays. The understanding is that you are familiar with one dimensional arrays. So if I can draw a parallel between 1D and 2D arrays, that would give you a better understanding to look at similarity and differences between these two. So in a one dimensional array, how do we visualize a 1D array? So this is a typical one dimensional array. Okay, let's put down one, two, three, five cells. Let's give this uh, a name, ARR, let's call it 1D, ARR 1D. So that's a one dimensional array. We can have values in here, 10, 80, 90, 60, 20. And we know that there are positions, position one, position two, three, four, and position five. So this is a typical one dimensional array. We are quite familiar with something like this. Uh, we've used it. We've been able to go to each position in the array, making use of a for loop, which we'll discuss further. So what is a two dimensional array? Well, as the name suggests, 2D, two dimensions. This, this just had one dimension. It's like a line. It's just a line with one dimension. A two dimensional array has two dimensions. So you have a situation where you don't have just a line, but you've got more something that has rows and columns. So let's assume we've got three rows and one, two, four columns. So in this case, let's give it a name. Let's call it ARR 2D, right? That's the name of the array. This is going to be row one, row two, row three, and this is going to be column one, column two, column three, and column four. So it has three rows and four columns. And if we want to access this particular cell, for example, let's assume we have 10 in there and we want to access that cell. So in a one dimensional array, if we wanted to access this cell, it was just one dimension, ARR1D, we would say ARR1D, which is the name and cell number one, and we would put the value 10, simple and straightforward. But here with the 2D array, we now have to access it using two dimensions. So in this case, we would say something like ARR 2D, which is the name, but now we need to specify the row and the column. So that is row one and column one. So the first, the first value is always your row, that never changes. And the second position is always your column, which will also not change. And here we will say takes on the value two. So if we wanted to put a value of 70 here, we would then say something like this, ARR 2D. This is now in row three. So this is gonna be three comma, and that's going to be in column four. So we'll say three comma four takes on the value 70. So when we talk about positions or indices, the index, we're talking in the 1D array, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But in a 2D array, we're now talking about 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 4. So those are the positions of each of the cells. It's two dimensional. So in row one, you'll see that the one is consistent because you are in row one and the column changes. In the second one, you are in row two. So that is consistent, two, one, two, 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 three, and two, four. So that's consistent and the column changes. And similarly here, three, <clears throat> three, one, three, two, three, three, and three, four. So, if we now want to be able to get these positions in a one dimensional array, you would recall we used a for loop. And the for loop, the for loop, okay, okay, maybe I'll just go back here. The for loop 
allowed me to get my position. So I would say for I assign the value one, two, five, do, begin, and I could then say, I could then say ARR one D square bracket I. And when I said I, I is the loop counter that constantly changes. It starts at one. So when I is one, you're looking at the first cell in the array. When I is two, you're looking at the second cell. So the way the loop is constructed is a very nice way of taking you to each cell in the array. Okay. And you can then put a value. If you want to put the value 100 in all the cells, then the loop will run five times and 100 will go into each cell. Or you could have an input box asking the user uh, what they wanted to type into each of the cells. But this is stuff we have already done and you understand, you should understand. Now the question is, how do you go to each position in a two-dimensional array? And one of the prerequisites was that you watch a video and I explained in that video the use of the nested for loop. Now a nested for loop is where you use two for loops. So you would say for R, assign the value one, two, three, do. I'm using R because that controls your rows. You could use, it's just a loop counter. You could use anything for that matter. And then I'm going to say for C, assign the value one, two, four. Do because I've got four columns again. And now when I when I refer to the array ARR two D, and I say R comma C takes on some value. Now, if you understand how the nested loop works, then you will know that R takes on the value one, and then C has to continue four times, one, two, three, four, which means that R is fixed at one and C is changing, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. And using the nested loop, it very nicely generates the positions that I need for a two-dimensional array. And the critical part that you have to understand in a nested loop is that the inner loop must complete four times before you can go back up and R becomes two. Then the inner loop runs four times again, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, and you'll see it's generating two, one, two, 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 three, two, four. And finally, you go back up and R becomes three, and then C is going to go one, two, three, four, as R was fixed at three. So you're going to get three, one, three, two, three, three, and three, four. So what's critical to understand, just the way with the 1D array, our rule was you need, if you want to go to each cell in the 1D array, use a single for loop. Similarly, the rule is, if you want to go to each cell in a 2D array, you will then make use of two for loops, a nested for loop as I did in this case. Okay, I hope you are able to follow that. And as I indicated, the rule here is uh, in a 1D array to go to each cell, use a single for loop. In a 2D array, the rule will be to go to each cell, use a nested, that's two, two. nested two for loops. By the way, when you nest, you could have three for loops or four for loops nested. The nesting just means one inside of the other. But in this case, with the 2D array, I'm referring specifically that we use two nested for loops. 
So now we're going to start. Let's look at a declaration and then soon you're going to be trying out something on computer, right? So how do we declare? In our variable section, we will say ARR1D, give it a name, colon, and you would say reserved word array one dot dot five of type integer something you're very familiar with. That's how you declare one DRA. If you're declaring a two DRA, you are then going to say the name. Well, this is obviously in a variable section, so it's going to be array 2D colon array. So now things are going to change a little. And you are now going to specify how many rows. So in my previous example, I had three rows, one dot dot three, comma, one dot dot four, how many columns, and then the data type of integer. So the only difference, right, the only difference is you now specifying your number of rows, and here you specifying your number of columns. That's how you would go about declaring your two-dimensional array 